Yeah, hello. Sir… Yeah, Srinivas. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. We are able to… Good afternoon, Srinivas. Welcome to Cat Lab Nings. Yeah, yeah. We are able to… We are able to see you and hear you. Yeah. We'll just take a minute just to show you because you are the first person to do demonstration. Yeah. This new 360 degrees camera which is placed in front of you, I think. Yeah, I yeah. think uh, we… where we get a feel of entire Cat Lab. But before… Uh, yeah. That is a… Uh, thing where you can capture the entire uh, ca camera. If you zoom it further up, then entire lab is seen. If you want to yeah. go, go close, you can show it. You, right. can, you can remove the zoom totally so as to see the entire lab. Okay. We have been working with this uh, for some time and mm -hmm. then uh, all the aspects of the lab are seen. Maybe on the bigger screen, uh, you would appreciate it better. And uh, the, the no technicians are involved, only one uh, 360 degrees camera which captures all round is this is what is required. We are there further, we have to refine it further, we have been working with this and uh, whenever we feel it is optimal, we will further highlight those aspects of it. I think you can yeah, show your case. Yeah, yeah. We have… Yeah. We yeah. have… We have… Yeah. Sir, uh, Dr. Sheshikaro, we have Dr. Sushil Kodali, Dr. Juan Pinto, Dr. Ramesh, yeah. Dr. Praveen Chandra, and yeah. Dr. Gopal Murgan with us and Rahul Potlovi. Uh, yeah, welcome to all. Yeah. Yeah, this is Nizam Institute of Medical Sciences. Here uh, we have our team. Dr. Shiv Prasad is there, Dr. Srikanth is there, Dr. Gopal is there and other uh, technicians and staff nurses. Here is a lady, 76 year old, present to us with significant angina. She has calcific lesions in the LAD and uh, LCX. One interesting thing is, uh, in her, the RCA is very small. Only there is a conus branch that is seen. You can show the patient data. Yes. Only the conus branch is seen there. The rest of the RCA is missing. We did a CT also. CT did not show any vessel in the right sinus. But uh, PDA is filling from the LED. So the CT person, the, the image all this said, the PDA is coming from the LED part of it, but uh, PLVB and other things are absent. So we are wondering whether it could be a congenital absence of the RCA, which can occur in 0.2 to 0.6 percent of the cases. You can see the CT there, the LED is uh, curving around the apex and uh, giving a small PDA there. And uh, here uh, actually both LED and LCX both are uh, very significantly calcified. You can show the angiogram. Our angiogram. Yeah. These injections you can show. Yeah. You see the calcium extending from almost astima, the LCX and the LED, both are having very tight lesions. There are two lesions in the LED. The ostium is tight and also mid segment is tight. And LCX, uh, there is a long segment calcium with a very tight lesion. And one OM is originating from the N6 there opposite the lesion. So our plan is to basically rotabulate this calcific lesion in the circumflex first because he has a significant angina and uh, ST depressions in lateral leads. The moment we put her on the table, patient started having angina. So we quickly engaged the left main and crossed the, this thing with a microcatheter in the Kogar wire. And once we remove the microcatheter, uh, once we remove the Kogar wire, we put the rotabulator wire. You can show the next. Yeah, this is the rotabulator wire. Hmm. And uh, so next. So we ablated the clock with a 1.25 bar. Yeah. Yeah, actually we wanted to take an IVAS run before uh, doing rotablation, but uh, patient was having significant angina and uh, the lesion was also very tight. We thought probably it won't allow the IVAS catheter to go in. So we ablated the clock and uh, later dilated with the balloon. Yeah, next. So this is a 3 minutes balloon, 3 to 12. And next, approximately yeah, also we dilated. Next, so one more inflation, more proximally. We did not want to dilate the ostium because ostium was uh, reasonably all right. But some block is there. But this is the injection after uh, dilatation. We wanted to protect the side branch. We put a wire into the side branch, obtuse marginal. 
and uh, you can notice a big dissection there on the inferior margin of the circumflex after the balloon inflation. So next. So then we took a IVAS run. So this is the IVAS catheter Valcano that is going in. Next. No, no. Mm -hmm. I, IVAS, yeah. Show the IVAS run. Yeah. You are seeing the IVAS? Yes. Hello? Yes, yes, yes. 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 Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is the, distally the vessel looks about uh, 3.2 and at the site of the lesion is very tight. Yes. So there is a calcium that is seen. Here uh, there is almost circumferential calcium. So that was after yes. a 1.5 per? Yeah. There was, you, there was a 1.5 burr that you used or? Yeah, 1.25. 1.25. Yeah, yes. So actually here uh, initially we thought the vessel could be maybe around uh, 3, but here the vessel looks a little bigger. So go back. Yes, approximately it looks more uh, almost 3.5 to 3.75 vessel. And there is a soft plaque at the asking of the LCX. So after taking this IVAS, we thought we would uh, stent that area with a 3.5 millimeter stent, which is 32 millimeters, 33 millimeters long. So this is a 3.5 into 33 stent. Yeah, perhaps before we go further, it's worth the discussion. Would, yeah. Based on that IVAS, would anyone have road ablated with a larger burr? Did you yeah. feel comfortable that you had complete expansion? Would people have done anything yeah. different? Uh, I, I think uh, I would have taken a larger burr uh, in this particular patient with uh, that I was finding. Yeah. yeah. No, we also thought like that, but uh, actually after the this thing, small dissection was noticed that was actually increased after uh, balloon dilatation. Mm -hmm. So we thought we would dilate with the balloon and see how he, but it yielded well with the balloon. Balloon has uh, inflated yeah. very well. So that's the reason we thought we would go ahead with uh, balloon inflation and uh, later stenting. So this is a 3.5 millimeter stent, which is almost across the OEM. OEM is squeezed a little bit. And approximately the ostium shows some Block, some lesion there, maybe about a 30% lesion at the ostium. And after the dilatation of this vessel, after stenting this vessel, we took an IVAS run again. We'll show you the IVAS run. Okay. Yeah, this is after stent. Yeah. So show us the IVAS of the ostium yeah. circumflex. Mm. Yeah, so IVAS, IVAS. Yeah. Yeah, another strategy, you know, and sometimes in vessels yeah. which are more than 3.5 or 3, uh, what one can do is after doing a rotablation, one can use a cutting balloon of 3.25 or 3.5 size or yeah. uh, angiosculpt and then uh, go ahead with the stent after that. So that may lead to better expansion in the stent. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. 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 But here uh, it has yielded very well with the no, balloon. It, it, it is, is, yeah, it has worked very well for you. Yeah. So that's the reason we thought to go ahead yeah. with stenting. That's right. So, <coughs> IOS, please. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, right at this point, the stent looks under expanded. I don't know what was the minimal stent area in that area. Minimal stent area is uh, almost uh, six uh, square millimeters. Mm -hmm. This distal rate is about eight. No, no, stent. Was that a three, 3.5 stent, did you say? 3.5 stent, yes. 3 3 3 3 yeah, so this is, uh, it is about uh, 6 square millimeters. So we thought it's uh, dilated uh, reasonably well. Seven and the uh, opposition is also quite good. <coughs> so, more proximally. In general, uh, for a 3 millimeter special, the area, stent area should achieve should be minimum uh, 6 square millimeters. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. Right now, that that point is 5.2 point yeah. or less than that. Yeah. This. Yo, so what is your opinion? You need to go with a further uh, expansion of the stent or 
we leave it at this juncture. I, I would expand. I mean, the data supports more than six millimeters. I think that there is a, a place where proximal to the toe M1 branch, about uh, maybe 10 millimeters proximal, even on yeah. angiogram, it doesn't look well expanded. Play, play. And uh, we still haven't seen uh, the ostium of the circumflex. Yeah. Uh, what is the minimal uh, area over there? Sorry, ostium of the M6. Here the ostium is around 5.8. 5.8 So what yeah. is your plan for the ostium? You want to do it or leave it? I think we can leave it because yeah. the area looks pretty good, almost 6. It's 5.9 at the ostium. Then I think it's okay yeah. to leave it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <coughs> so about the distinct stented area, I think uh, you need to dilate further. Already dilated with 3.5 balloon up to 14 atmospheres. I would go with the four or non-compliant balloon in that area. The area of the lesion. The area of the lesion. Yeah, right. Well, certainly the place yeah. where you had uh, dumbling of that previous balloon, mm. uh, you can give it another whack there with high pressure because yeah. uh, the vessel diameter is clearly four. So you yeah. can even put a four non C and go to 20 atmospheres because there's plenty of room, uh, low risk of rupture. Yeah, yeah. Right. I the have way, this concern is that it might uh, close out that OEM. OEM is already squeezed. So if you dilate that uh, area further, there is a chance of closing down the OM there. I, I agree with you. I think yeah. you need to dilate just a little bit proximal to that OM uh, and leave proximal that OM. Yeah. Yeah. Perhaps a short balloon may not uh, impinge on that OM because I think that you have a little bit room, probably about 15 millimeters from... Uh, yeah. And remember that OM is actually quite a big branch. So are you going to yeah. re-enter and then dilate the ostium or...? That's the reason why we thought we would leave it at that juncture because any further dilatation might close down that OM. Yeah. Okay? I think that's a good, uh, yeah. reasonable thing to do. All right. Yeah, yeah. I think now we'll go ahead with the uh, LED. So, LED is uh, again having a lot of calcium from ASCAP to the mid segment. Epicranial. Yeah. Now, I would so, still put the keep the wire in the circumflex because uh, you might have to do a uh, almost uh, come back up to the ostium of the LED or even into the left main. I see. Oh. That. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. He is planning to do a rotor to the LED as oh. well. Yeah, yeah. We'll have to do the rotor to micro the micro wire, N wire, N with the micro catheter. With the micro micro catheter with the wire. So for the LED, I don't think, I mean, do you routinely use microcatheter? Because uh, personally, I would just go straight ahead with the rota wire. Rota wire, yeah. 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 But yeah, in general, our uh, thing is that basically we are more comfortable with going with uh, microcatheter. Okay. Right. But when calcium is there, a lot of calcium is there, there is a chance of keeping the rota wire all this. So that's the reason I most will be going with uh, mm. microcatheter and then put a rota wire. Right. I, I think both both, yeah, both, both approaches are okay. Yeah, but let me tell you, I mean, uh, in, in typically very very difficult situations, also rotavirus is quite actually easy to yeah. maneuver. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You would prefer a rota flexible wire or extra support wire? A, a flexible wire, preferably. Because yeah. when calcium is there, a lot of calcium is there. Yeah, I think to avoid bias, I always use rotor floppy, which is the, I think, the rotor flexible wire yeah. you're talking about. Rotor floppy is the yeah. usual one. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> circumflex, you use rotor floppy only. I like the uh, rotor excess when uh, you're dealing with the LED and it's straight. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a little bit less uh, of Hello, a problem pardon. when you bring uh, the rotor through the guide. But other than that, we use the rotor floppy for almost every case, especially when there's torch loss. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, the vessel is more tortuous, I think uh, uh, flexible wire uh, may be more advantageous. What do you think? Well, I, I think it's really down to uh, individual uh, preference. I, I use a floppy wire in majority of the cases because I'm really worried about uh, wire bias. Okay. I'd rather have the uh, rotor wire go the way the wire is rather than try and force against uh, anything. So uh, if you have a stiff wire, you, there's a small chance you may have a wire bias, you may cut through a corner, 
But if you have a floppy wire, you wouldn't. So, uh, and because Rhoda, anyway, it's uh, it's differential cutting. It'll only cut the calcific plug anyway. So even if you if it wobbles around, doesn't matter. So I prefer a floppy wire for that reason, unless it's uh, another reason. Yeah. So basically, 99% of the times you are okay with a floppy wire. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I think we'll have to increase the curve of the wire. I think it's uh, already more angulated there. Are there any other atherectomy devices available in India? So come again? Are, are there any other atherectomy devices available in India besides uh, rotoblader? No. Uh, it's just uh, uh, rotational atherectomy, uh, and that's it. There's no yeah. laser yet. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so orbital is not here. Sushil, so you are talking of orbital atherectomy? Yes. I, yeah. So laser uh, is here. Laser. Laser is not. No, I mean, uh, la laser, I, I mean, it was still not available with us, and now we're just going to start the uh, initial study, which is 100 patient study uh, with lasers, and but that uh, I think is a option in these kind of situations, okay. certainly. But orbital atherectomy, we have done, uh, we did the orbit one trial initially, and uh, it is a reasonable device in these kind of situations. But uh, after that, it is not available in India as of yeah. now. But you all must be having it there. Yeah, we have <laughs> orbital. So and would you uh, use it in this situation? I, yeah, I would use either in this situation or mostly actually in left mains. It uh, is very helpful because earlier we were talking about left main rotor. Even a two or per may not be enough at times. I think you have, whereas orbit will be giving you a little bit more uh, 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 atherectomy uh, area. That said, I, you know, one comment about uh, uh, differential cutting, I, I truly don't agree with that in, in the sense that I don't believe in it. Because if truly every device is differential cutting, we should never have any perforation. Whether it is orbital or with uh, a rotor, we still have perforations. Even with orbital, the higher the speed that you increase, you can actually go into and do atherectomy in a 5 vessel. But that will cause more uh, chances of perforation. But, but it, it's, it's, I think there are some differences based on the individual anatomy, right? Because orbital atherectomy often shaves. And so if you have a deep circumferential plaque, it doesn't provide the crack you need to expand with a balloon. In those scenarios, sometimes the road is stiff wire and making, sometimes it almost feels like a notch in that calcium that allows you to expand. And I think Rhoda is better for doing that in, in certain scenarios. I've just, you know, with orbital, sometimes it, it just, it seems to be shaving equally and you still have that inability to expand and you don't get that differential cut uh, in one side. You know, I did a few cases of Rhoda, maybe we did about 30 or so. And then my feeling is that Orbital atherectomy is like a, a softer rotablation system compared to rotablation, which is like, you know, it can pierce through anything. But uh, with that uh, olive-shaped uh, device, it'll be a little difficult to move into very tight lesions and very long calcified stenosis. I think uh, also coming back to laser, I think it's particularly very helpful in cases of ISR. But I think in this case, trying to get a laser down that calcified vessel is going to be a little bit difficult. I think it's really down to the atherectomy device's properties. Uh, when it's calcium, it's clear bond or calcium, laser is bad because laser is not good for calcium. Laser is good for a, a soft calcium or a calcio, fibro fibrocalcific plaque. But if it's bond or calcium, laser just doesn't cut. You need a, a, a drill. But uh, I guess in routine patients where the balloon is not expanding, you already have a wire, then laser would be good like uh, uh, instant restenosis or perhaps in acute MI where you want to uh, you know, subline the thrombus, laser is great. But uh, perhaps not for bond or calcific lesions right. like these. But I think for that deep calcium that Sushil was talking about, laser uh, can be an option when you use it with contrast uh, and try to uh, see if you can get the a little bit of no, that's a good point with contrast, yeah. but I think you have to be cautious with that, and that's sometimes, you know, you can create a lot of harm with that as well yeah. if, you're not, if you're not careful. And all of these atherectomies, I think the challenge is the devices have gotten so good, the balloons are so good, that we use it less and less. 
So the inertia and the threshold, to, at least in the U.S., to do atherectomy is high. And so the people are not very experienced. Our fellows as well, you know, we, we use less and less atherectomy. No, I think, you know, the fellows uh, actually separately keep track of the amount of rota cases that they do. It's like they get to see a unicorn when, uh, when they do a rota case. But I will say also, too, for atherectomy, uh, when you're doing a CTO case and uh, the vessel is dissected and calcified, you want to check? Uh, I often will feel a little bit better Sir, about uh, doing atherectomy in the subintimal uh, okay. space with the laser That's than fine. with uh, the rota. Keep it. Here we are going here with the 1.25 bar. Have you guys had experience where you use a large bar? Uh, sorry, large French guide, and then you bring the laser, use a guide liner to deploy the laser, pass the lesion, and bring the laser back to debulk rather than going forward. So, check chair. Rotation check chair. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear exactly what you said. Sorry, I'm saying because obviously laser is sometimes difficult to pass through a calcified tissue. Uh, I was told some people are using a large French guide, putting a guide liner, making sure they get past the lesion and then laser on the way back rather than passing the probe forward. So I actually think laser is uh, weaker than orbital atherectomy, in my opinion, if you think about atherectomy devices. But uh, that said, there is no comparison clinical trial. So it is my own perception that uh, rotor cuts better than orbital atherectomy and then uh, probably laser. So I think if you have a thick amount of calcium, it's probably better to choose rotor in that scenario where you can't actually pass uh, any uh, device, a balloon, or there's no, I mean, we are struggling to use a guideliner to deliver a, a laser and bringing it back, uh, whether it adds any uh, true atherectomy, I'm not sure. I think that said, if you're, if you're doing that type of patient, you should follow up uh, uh, pre and post IVAS. Uh, pre and post uh, laser IVAS would be helpful to know whether that is working or not. So Dr. Seshkar we are back with you and we are discussing yeah, yeah. about different <coughs> atherectomy devices while you passed uh, a wire and you exchanged it for the rotor floppy. Yeah. And now you're going back with 1.25 rotor bird, right sir? Yeah, yeah, 1.25 bird. What are people's first choice for burr size? I, I tend to always start with a 1.5. Uh, yeah, 1.5 seems... Uh, yeah, here yeah, the, the arteries are a little smaller. Uh, that's the reason I mostly will be going with 1.25. And uh, if it is needed, we will upsize the burr later. I, I uh, do you know, rarely uh, use the so 1.25 because uh, one, you know, we've generally had this uh, rule of 0.8 or less ratio uh, to worry. And then also, too, the 1.25 burr is shaped a little bit differently yeah. than the 1.5 burr. Okay. It's yeah. a little bit narrower and okay. more like a watermelon seed. And it has, I think, a little more risk <laughs> of going into and past the plaque and then not being able to mm. come back out. Uh, so for that reason, I tend to avoid come the, the 1.25 okay. burr. So I, I, sh I base it on uh, the severity of the lesion. If it is very tight, I go to 1.25. If it's not, I go to 1.5. Because even in the United States, each bird is expensive. Yeah, but you know the concept of just modifying the plaque with a 1.25 and then use a balloon to dilate the lesion further also works pretty well, as he is doing in this case. Yes. Yeah. While doing this, actually, we have to pay attention to the wire not to be drifting back as we are seeing. Yeah, yeah. Wire yeah. is a little bit drifting back. Right. I, don't I, I also do shorter uh, uh, forward passes uh, and a little bit slower. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, kind of tap it forward and then just slowly advance it, slowly come back. And then when I come back, it's on Dynaglide. Uh, actually, when I come back into the guide after I've yeah. uh, pulled it back, I uh, also yeah. saw the burr stop halfway through. I'd be nervous with that. I'd yeah, pull yeah. it all the way back. I agree with that. I think the worst scenario is getting that stop. Yeah, you know, here there is a dense calcium actually, it's not passing through the solution. Mm -hmm. It's quite dense right at the proximal segment, and I'm surprised and it went right down and then came back. Yeah, initially it went down and it came back. Yeah. Uh, this is, I think, one of the things which is very, very 
So I would try to get the wire a little bit yeah. farther down and not stop the burr in the lesion. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You should not stop the burr in the lesion. Yeah. Ready? something uh, going on with the wire and the brake on the back yeah, yeah. table because the wire is moving a lot. Is, is there the a brake on the wire? The mm -hmm. assistant should be very careful with the uh, brake and also try to advance if you if it's coming back while doing the rotational atherectomy. And you, yeah, you might want to move the brake uh, closer to the uh, to the yeah. manifold. And you need that wire sitting much deeper if you can. The advantage is the floppy wire, the tip is very good, but at the same time, wire sometimes okay, you can suddenly, no? okay. the rotor can go Take beyond that and break the wire. Rotate, rotate the thing, rotate the wire and go forwards. Yeah, kinking it is. It is kinking. Have you ever no, had what had happens is that once you have to the push on the black button is in there, order to advance it becomes the wire. very difficult to push the wire. So while rotating, it is very easy to push the wire. Inside. Yeah, that's what, uh, the, yeah. rotation I think we'll be able to, but yes. here right. We are no. trying to rotate. Yes. That's going a little bit in. No, what Dr. Praveen Chandra is saying is while burrowing, while, while doing burring the atherectomy, yeah. advance the wire. Uh, yeah. oh, or yeah. if you're very proximal, you can always go on Dynaglide. Mm -hmm. If you go on Dynaglide, yes. you won't uh, uh, you go on a blade, but you can advance the wire. Yeah. When it is touching the plaque, actually, wire is uh, coming out because it is not able to go through the densely calcific area, but initially it went in once, but subsequently. Uh, just Ready? be patient. Just be yeah, patient. It's quite a lot of ectopics. Uh, uh, check your wire position. Uh, it's quite a lot of ventricular ectopics on your ECG. Okay. Yeah. Can, you, can you pull it out and do an angiogram just uh, for the sake of uh, yeah. education? Yeah. Mm. Or at least into the guide. Ready? Injection first. Yeah, good pressure. pressure. Good pressure. Make sure there's Ready? no air embolism. Yes, yeah, yeah. Go. Okay. So that yeah, uh, the reaction of a little patches also. Right. Then right. calcium there. So that the lesion, lesion definitely has not been. Uh, uh, so I uh, just really check the system and make sure that your white. Uh, Break is uh, is on the wire and close to the uh, the burring mechanism because the wire seems to be moving a lot forward and back, and then I would just be patient. It's going to go through. It always goes through. Yeah. Yeah, and just sort of more pecking motion, uh, sort of at the lesion and sitting on the lesion and then coming back may, may be helpful yeah. in this scenario. I think okay. doing all of this. I mean, the one thing to keep in mind is you've done road yeah. on the circ. You've got microvascular debris in the circ, you're ischemic in the circ, you stent it. Now you're doing yeah. rota in the in proximal LAD, you're going to embolize distally, and you're going to get microvascular embolization, and you're going to get ischemic. Yeah. And I think the issue of ectopics and, and the hemodynamics, I noticed the pressures have been in the 80s, is to okay. be cautious and be patient and make sure that the hemodynamics are, are okay. Yeah, because, hemodynamics. Because because you, you've, you've stressed this heart quite a bit at this point with, with a lot of uh, rotational atherectomy. So I would make sure, as uh, Kirthi said earlier, sometimes do it, wait a minute. Uh, sometimes you give a little burst of Neo before you start your rotor run, do shorter yeah. runs, and those type of things as well. Not going further. Yeah, yeah, we're waiting for the patient to settle down because she has some engine also. And I would suggest actually if you need to get the wire out and position that wire much more distant and use a fine cross or whatever microcatheter to do that if necessary. Dr. Sheshadri, can I ask, is yeah, it the yeah. same burr as the circ burr that you use? Yeah, 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 same burr, okay. same burr. Because one of the things, because with all the burring that you may have done, the, the, the diamond uh, end may yeah, have yeah. gone blunt also, uh, worthwhile considering. If you yeah, yeah, we are also thinking on those yeah, lines. I, I think, think so. we need to go for a new burr. Yeah, probably. I'd, uh, yeah, yeah. Position this wire. We'll and try once more and see, otherwise, we'll yeah. switch out a new button. Sounds good. Ready? 
Yeah, before so going to a new bird, I would actually position the wire on top of the thing yeah. that, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. and uh, try this uh, again. Are you going uh, Because I thought that, you know, the bird can, is good enough for at least uh, five or six patients. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, doing yeah but that, you know, what Gopal is saying is this happened with reused birds. Right, right, yes. But in the same patient, same time, I don't think that should be a problem. I hope the bird was... Yeah, here. sometimes there will be some problem with the gas reverse because we'll be What's using it on four or five patients, no? Uh, yeah, we'll after gassing, they sometimes will yeah. have these problems, but new bird, as you said, there shouldn't be any problem. Yeah, this is the New York bird. Yeah. Yeah. What is Yeah, we went uh, sufficiently good distance. Hmm? No, so, patients now know New York and then uh, stuff. <laughs> So but I'd be very, very careful using those terms. No, I, I would try and keep changing. the burr a little bit longer at the lesion rather than coming back so quickly. Let it sit at the lesion, not pushing forward, but let it sit right at the lesion maybe. I, I, I wouldn't pull the burr back, actually let it play right there in the mid lesion uh, ra uh, rather than uh, uh, yes. yeah, stay there, stay there for stay there. Uh, 30 yeah, yeah. seconds. Slow movements, I think. Yeah, Forward slow pecking like, motion. Uh, so that's okay. Still, I think you are not able to cross that area. But initially you know, I will still suggest that you better position the wire more distally, then you'll have good support. Yeah. And then uh, the wire, the yeah, you try to do that with the slow the pecking yeah. motion. Yeah, motion then, uh, Lena? You said? Lena? Take on Lena. We are taking out the burr and we will reposition the wire. Wire check. Okay, now you went yeah, distally. Better, yeah. That's better. That's, that's perfect. Good. Yeah, that's, that's, that's perfect. That, you know, that is the way. Because yeah. when you, once you rotate it, it moves yeah. inside. Go now. Now check that brake is working. I think that just demonstrated how Dynaglad can help uh, pass yeah. the wire, advance yeah. the wire forward. Yeah, that's what you're saying, yeah. It really should be a frictionless system, so that's why it passes easily on Dynaglad. Okay, okay. then change the wire, please. Actually, put yeah. another fine cross of microcatheter and change your rotor floppy, because wire, uh, 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 no, if it is kinked, yeah, that's, that's what your technician is saying, Kadani. Exactly, I think yeah. uh, that may be uh, the reason why it is... Uh, right, right. Maybe that's why it's catching up at the break point where we are not able to... Yeah, we'll try one side, the other. Okay. Change the wire. Mm -hmm. huh? Okay, sir. No, the wire is moving. And the brake on, brake fit, huh? Ready? Brake fit. Brake is on, no? Sir, Dana, Dana. Guide support is very poor because the guide is backing out quite a yeah. lot. Maybe the brake thing is not working properly. Is, yeah. is the brake working? Yeah, yeah. Brake is not working. Ready? Bad the cargo button. Coming out, where is coming out? Okay, I think everything has come. You have to bring out everything. Yeah, yeah. Take out all. Take out. Take out the wire. Advance the wire. There's a good chance this wire. Just make sure it's not looped in, uh, in the order as you're trying to. Advance. I think it's better to change, change, everything. change everything. Change everything. They will change the wire. I think probably yeah. there may be some Sir. kink on the wire. Yes. With the dyno will come out. Because same wire was used for the circumflex. Sir, with the dyno will come out. It is holding the wire. Dyno is... Huh? Maybe first. Yeah. Yeah. No, so we have to take everything out. And we'll let everything go. Yeah, very... Actually... This is not working, I think. Mm -hmm. Regular wire. Can't come Can out. Can you go with the microcatheter and the regular wire, then put the rotor hmm? wire? Yeah. I think there's something either wrong with the brake or, or the wire, because the wire shouldn't be moving. Uh, right. So, for the audience's sake, I think uh, yeah. all of these steps very easily. I mean, obviously, if you, there is a kink in the hmm? wire, try to reuse. Yeah. It for the Look, so push it, push it. Can you focus on the wire? Yeah. at a different time. I think there is some kick on the wire. Yeah, so you change the new one. Yeah. 
other thing is, uh, what have you guys done when the bar is stuck? I'm sure how many of you have had bar stuck in calcified lesions? Yeah, so I've had, uh, whenever I don't pay close attention to, to the rotor bar, uh, I get stuck. The once I was doing a fourth uh, rotor for the day and I wanted to go home <laughs> sooner <laughs> and then the rotor yeah, got stuck. Not. Here, when it gets stuck, it's not very pleasant. So you can see here, uh, it's better to be very careful, prevent it, uh, right from uh, doing it slowly and uh, pecking motion is much better, having the wire distally well positioned. So this portion of the wire, the bar got stuck. Actually, wire is not coming out. Oh. So yeah, it got stuck there. See yeah. It? yeah so here the wrong. wire is kinked, uh, so I think just uh, yeah. maybe now uh, you have to Put yeah. it from the other end. So separate it from the uh, the motor, yeah. uh, separate the burr from the motor, and you'll be able to see the wire, and you'll be able to pull it out from there, or you can cut the wire to preserve the burr. Yeah. Or, or uh, put on dyna outside the body, and you can just... Scissor uh, Can you pull it from the back end when you put it on dyna glide? Yes. So if you back end, it's, you just pull it up. You can cut it end. You can cut it end. You have to hold the black button anyhow. Dana? Huh? It's on Dana, no? No, not Dana. Dana, I see. No, it's not coming out. Is the brake released? Uh, I no, think it's... Yeah, the brake is released. Yep, yeah, the brake is released. Yeah, the brake is released. Yeah, with great difficulty, yes. it's coming out. Yeah. No, it is not moving, sir. No, not, not moving. moving at all. Yeah, it's not moving at all. Oh. I think it's completely stuck. Yeah, yes. yeah. I would change it. I think that is the yeah. reason it was probably, yeah, uh, probably moving. Yeah, probably yes. Yeah. Come. Okay, hello, card. Approximately the capture in this is it, though? I would check your flush rate through the burr because uh, the reason, one of the reasons why the wire could be stuck within the entire burr in a lumen is inadequate flush contrast or something gets in, blood gets in. If the, your flush rate is not adequate, then there's not going to be a constant flush of saline and of course the wire can get stuck at some point within the entire lumen. Come back, come back. Hmm. Yeah. 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 What do you think about the RCA? RCA is really absent or...? Uh, no, I think it's probably coming from the left coronary cusp or uh, somewhere else. I, I thought I was... Uh, with your AL1, I thought you saw something uh, or that wasn't that... Uh, but it's not feeling retrogradely. So. Suppose if you had, had occluded, should feel retrogradely from the other system, you know, yeah, not feeling from the... No, I, that's why I'm saying I don't think it's occluded. It's probably an uh, anomalous yes. origin. Yes, RCA. RCA. Yeah. What wire please? New wire please. So here even microcatheter also. The yet. microcatheter is. Mm, wire is coming out. Not going in easily. You see that? Yeah. Wire is coming out. So even microcatheter also is not going in easily. Is it a fine cross or...? Yeah, it's fine cross. Do you, do you have a, a cross air, cross air or...? Yeah, cross air, right. But cross I think air fine cross is the fine best for this situation, one. yeah. Because coarse will not cross. Blade is visible. Yeah, here, I think uh, the tightest area 
But initially it went in now. Uh, Maybe there's a dissection. You know. So what is the reason why it is not going now? Initially, it, uh, we could negotiate the... So, probably some graph modification there. Perhaps yes. uh, because uh, the burr was being pushed at the calcific spot, we don't know what happened. Maybe there's a shelf-like one-way valve system. It's just not allowing anything hard going through. Uh, I think Corsair, the nose cone may wedge in <coughs> a bit easily than uh, yeah. Corsair. Yeah, but perhaps the, it may wedge in a bit better. Hello, no, will engage the guiding has properly. difficulty Come to hello. such kind of very tight lesions. Mm. You have caravel. Mm. Mm. Caravel is slightly um, the same thing, but yeah. slightly better. Yeah, it's an interesting thing. Actually, initially it crossed well. Right. But uh, subsequently, hello, order, please. But a fine cross Cut. doesn't go. Yeah. yeah. More order. 360 degree. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> At least we can see the 360 degree view of the cat lab, which is very good. Yeah, touch this. Guiding is not against properly. Can you show us the angiogram, please? Okay. Now come to the cranial fish. Right. Maybe train. Good guide support, uh, it could, could cross the. Vision. Yeah, it is crossed now. Yeah, take a this thing. Rota wire. Young rota wire, floppy. Uh, floppy wire. I think we have about uh, five to eight minutes more, right, Dr. Srinivas? Yeah. yeah. Or we can uh, go for a lecture and come back. I, I'll are you taking another 1.25, uh, Dr. Seshadri, or...? Uh, yeah, yeah, we're taking another uh, new 1.25 button. Yeah. <coughs> hmm. I think this room looks better than my cat lab. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. It's definitely cleaner than our cat lab. Parker. Yeah. So, Dr. Seshkadragar, we'll come back to you after one lecture. If, is that okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay, sir. Yes. Thank you. All right. Can you hear us again? Yeah, yes. yeah. Yeah, I'm able to hear. You are able to hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, Dr. Seshkadragar. Yeah, yeah. Put yeah. another rota wire and uh, going with the 1.25 bar. Okay. But uh, unfortunately, we don't have 1.25 new bar there. 1.5 is there. I think so, that that's fine, but uh, you know. We want to try the same burr with a new wire. Oh, okay. You were able to get the wire out? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But uh, I think uh, there is a lot of resistance. I think uh, this burr is a uh, little. You know, I think if the wire is stuck, sometimes the lumen of the burr itself may be having some debris in it. And yeah, yeah. Ready? One minute, sir. Yeah, we'll try this, otherwise we'll take, uh, go for 1.5 bar. Yeah, I think even 1.5 is okay, but uh, as yeah. long as you do a slow pecking motion. Yeah. It's tall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the bar is jumping, actually, you should uh, perform a very smooth pecking motion, right, right. but here it is uh, jumping. Okay. Uh, yeah, one has to make sure there's no slack in the wire. One. Yeah, there is no slack. I mean, in the system. Yeah, yeah there is. Pressures are all right, no? Good pressures. Yes. Yeah, another, yeah, okay. So, ready? Yeah, see, it's jumping stuck. I don't know why it is uh, jumping. That means that I think I'll wait until friction. There is some friction. Yeah. 
in the weight the patient is having yeah mm. she's having no vomiting. vomiting yeah the last thing we want is the bird to get stuck so be careful there's no slack and you know yeah yeah maybe it would have been better if you had a new bird uh, 1.25 but uh, this uh, 1.25 uh, which was all used in the circumflex it's not going smoothly yeah then uh, think, uh, we should change over to 1.5 i think I mean, you did get through the lesion is it worth seeing if wounds yeah. would expand at this point I, actually i would do that uh, take the bird out see if you can advance the balloon a two o balloon and see yeah, yeah. And, uh, that now we could actually cross the lesion right yeah. ragu we could go across the lesion yeah, 2000 uh, we'll try another uh, ablation another run and see whether we can cross it uh, smoothly later we dilate the lesion with a balloon she is all right here pressure sir uh, around 80 initially she was complaining of for some angina now i think uh, the angina is settled we'll take one injection she has some vomiting So what do you do is uh, go to a new bird or uh, we we'll try once again this I would go to a new bird or a balloon you know yeah okay. there, there's something wrong with that bird I would I think I would try, new bird. try to uh, do a balloon or uh, yeah so we we'll try another run and see or uh, you will just take it out and uh, dilate the balloon yeah take it out and dilate and then we'll come back after our lectures so. yeah so okay. thank you well. can yeah, you yeah welcome again actually with the second run we could uh, cross it cross it the cross the lesion just show the minus 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 one more minus in the same bird new minus. wire so 1.25 bar only go back go back go back yes yes yeah this one yeah now we will put the uh, think uh, negative negative able to go through the lesion freely <laughs> and after this run okay. we dilated with a 2.5 mm balloon show the next plus this is 2.5 into 12 dilated the lesion part at uh, almost 12 atmospheres then proximally also dilated again next so that is the result after balloon dilatation yeah. next uh, we took a stent next so uh, this is the 2.75 into the 33 so we kept it in the ostium next yeah next so this is the inflation stent inflation next so that is the result uh, after uh, stenting yeah after this uh, we took a ivas run we'll show you the ivas run well still there is uh, some flock at the lesion site yeah go ahead with the ivas run distally the vessel is about 2.7 dia next yeah here uh, there it seems there is some under expansion of the stent yes yes so what do you think this is i mean i think in the proximal portion it just uh, looks a little bit under expanded uh, what is the minimal stent area in that minimal stent area is uh, about uh, 5.2 here yeah. so we are dilating with a 3 balloon all right i mean it's a 2.75 stent uh, i think uh, you got uh, maximum 2.9 uh, so averaging about 2.4 yeah. millimeters yeah. if you want you can uh, post dilate more uh, Uh, yeah, we are dilating with a 3 mm balloon. Okay. So you did post dilate further? Yeah. So this is a 3 mm balloon. And that uh, rotor bar was 1.5, uh, right sir? No, 1.25. Same. Okay. Okay. Same so bar. So we thought we try once more, but we oh, could yeah. uh, cross. Okay. Before taking 1.5, okay. now we tried that. Very good. Yeah, you'll do there only. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, sir. Twelve. Rotate twelve. Twelve. Ah. 
How many atmospheres? 12, sir. Showing up to 12, we're going up to 15. Sir, this is 3. Yeah. 14, 15. Yeah. I think should go up. You go approximately? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Hello, Cardam. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Go ahead. 12, up to 16, 14. So? 16. Yeah. Okay, hello, Cardam. Patient is fairly stable after uh, the LED was uh, stented. Right, your blood pressure is also good. I think you yeah, blood pressure achieved, improved. Yeah. achieved an excellent result. Yeah, her uh, antenna is totally settled. More LED woman. Chest. 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 Chest, please. Yeah, things should go. Inject. Ready? Ready, sir. Go. Inject. Okay, sir. Hold it. Ready? 16, 17. 16. I don't think you will inject MC1s. Just inject. Take another injection. Or you can show the leg. Scene minus. AP card, we will take other ones. Yeah. Here. Yeah. It's exactly the right, right. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. But you had to go high pressure there, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. going up to 18 atmospheres. Uh, more, maybe it's still yeah. under deployed. Okay. Up to 20. Yeah. 18. 20. 20. Yeah. Okay. Deflect. Yeah. Final angiogram and uh, yes. So it's initially we thought uh, it's a 2.5 vessel, but after dilatic deletion, the vessel size has uh, increased. Actually, it's a bigger vessel. Right. right. Ready? Within this time, I'm ready, sir. Yeah. That looks good. Okay, Dr. Teshkiragar, a very nice uh, demonstration of a rotor in a very difficult case yeah. uh, that you have yeah, done. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thanks, thanks again for yeah. wonderful transmissions. Yeah.